I'm Maria Elena Giassi, and this is Currents. A big day in New York as Archbishop Timothy Dolan is named a cardinal. We'll talk with Brooklyn Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio about that, as well as the role immigration will play in the 2012 presidential election. We did not enforce our border. Worse yet, we did not enforce any restrictions in the workplace because the draw is that people come here to work. And it's that time of year again, the annual Three Kings Parade. Three Kings Day is one of the biggest holidays in the community. It certainly is important here in New York City and in East Harlem. Good evening and thank you for joining us. It was an announcement that everyone expected and early this morning it was made. New York Archbishop Timothy Dolan has been named a cardinal. Archbishop Dolan was one of 22 cardinals named by Pope Benedict XVI. In a statement earlier today, Archbishop Dolan said, quote, this is not about privilege, change of colors, hats, new clothes, places of honor, or a different title. He said that the announcement is about an affirmation of love from the Pope to a celebrated archdiocese and community, and a summons to its unworthy archbishop to serve Jesus, his universal church, his vicar on earth, and his people better. Archbishop Dolan also talked about the big news earlier today during an appearance on Channel 5 here in New York. I had heard rumors, and I, truth, I, was, I was surprised. I have to be honest. I, I, I knew probably only because I'm Archbishop of New York, not for Timothy Dolan, but because of the position. Sooner or later, I'd be a cardinal. But I, and when I, heard, when I heard the strong rumors that there was going to be a consistory on February 18th, I thought, well, then I'm not. I'm at peace. I'm not getting it this time. Because Cardinal Egan is still under 80. Right. And, the, and the Holy See is rather strict on that protocol. But apparently the Pope thought, well, look, Cardinal Egan will be 80 on April 2nd, so New York should be given this uh, exception. So I was, I was kind of surprised. The new Cardinal also exhibited some of his signature self-deprecating humor when asked about some of the perks of his new role. I'll dress a little different. You talk about somebody happier than me, it's the tailor that I'm going to see later. Can you imagine this contract to, to, to do a couple uh, red cassocks for me? That's going to hey, listen, that's gonna help about unemployment the in the garment district. What about Archbishop Dolan was not the only New Yorker honored today. Archbishop Edwin O'Brien, a former auxiliary bishop for the New York Archdiocese and currently the head of the Knights of the Holy Sepulchre, was also named a cardinal. Archbishop Stolen, O'Brien, and the 20 others named today will be elevated at a consistory next month at the Vatican. To talk about all of this and much more, our news director, Ed Wilkinson, spoke with a man who has an inside scoop on the news in the Catholic Church. Vatican watcher, current contributor, and author of the blog, Whispers in the Loja, Rocco Palma. Rocco Palma from Whispers in the Loja, thanks for being with us today. Anytime, Ed. Busy day. Well, it's a, it's a busy day, and it's, and it's a great day here in New York because uh, our Archbishop here has uh, been named the Cardinal, and also Archbishop O'Brien, who is a priest of the New York Archdiocese, was also named the Cardinal. Uh, well, you know, it's funny because New Yorkers always seem to see the uh, Vatican is, or, or see, seem to see themselves as the capital of the world. <laughs> it looks like the Vatican agrees, at least today. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you think of the choice of Archbishop Dolan? I guess everybody figured he was going to be in this batch, right? Uh, well, no, actually, because Cardinal Egan doesn't turn 80 until April 1st, April, April, right. actually April 2nd. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's been an unwritten rule, and it's never happened here in the States that you would have, even for a day, hmm. two voting cardinals in the same diocese. Right. So you have this uh, break of precedent, but I think it shows, one, the Pope's personal mm -hmm. regard for Archbishop Dolan, mm -hmm. but also at the same time the fact that Archbishop Dolan is uh, president of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, yeah. I think, played into it as well. And that, you know, it was just too important to wait. Yeah. And Archbishop O'Brien, uh, there's a man that has worn so many hats, a very versatile leader, uh, well-deserved, right? Yeah, well, he, I mean, you could call him the general if you want, because mm -hmm. for 10 years, of course, he was uh, head of the Archdiocese for Military Services, uh, then became the Archbishop of Baltimore. Was And it's funny, as a young priest, he was communications director for the Archdiocese of That's New York. Right. He was a spokesman. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he's someone who's always been very good to media and always very... Uh, 
collaborative, very approachable, and, mm-hmm. and so. But both are good for media. Uh, you know, maybe some viewers saw this, but not long after his elevation was announced, uh, Cardinal President Dolan showed up on the Today Show <laughs> <laughs> to share the news with the country. And uh, I, I don't think that's ever happened before. So that was yeah. a really uh, a fun, sweet moment. Yeah. And also, there's another North American, the uh, Archbishop Collins from Toronto, and I understand that uh, you have a personal relationship with him. I do. I have a personal relationship with all three, and I, I think very highly of all of them, but uh, especially because, you know, he's a much lower-profile figure kind of on his own uh, volition. Uh, Cardinal Desmond Collins is uh, tremendously sharp, but unbelievably humble. I mean, this is someone who could read texts in Hebrew and Greek and explain them to you in approachable English, but at the same time um, has a tremendous sense of humility and prayerfulness, I, I think his favorite restaurant in Toronto are the Tim Hortons donut <laughs> shops, which are like Dunkin' Donuts uh-huh. here. And, and uh, you know, he, he likes sneaking out. You know, when he got there, he was figuring out how close the closest Tim Hortons was uh, to, to his uh, residence. And, and um, just just a, a wonderfully delightful figure. And it's, I'll just tell you a real quick Tom Collins story. You know, he loves technology and everything. Whenever he's now in, in the sanctuary, he's playing with his, you know, fiddling with his Blackberry like it's a sacred text because his <laughs> emails are on there, and everybody uh, has his email address in Toronto. Uh, but he got an iPad a couple years ago. He didn't know how to work the Wi-Fi, but he said, look, I've got this application that has this aquarium on it, and you touch it, it goes bloop, and that's <laughs> what made him happy for two weeks. Uh, so he's, uh, you know, it's a different kind of cardinal, I think, than what we're used to. Yeah. Well, uh, getting back to Archbishop Dolan for a minute, uh, his star has really taken off. I mean, uh, you know, everybody saw him as a, as, as a rising uh, a prelate, but, uh, I mean, how far can he go? He's a cardinal. Are we looking at perhaps someday, maybe, the first American pope? Ed, you're starting to sound like his mother. <laughs> I know, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, uh, apparently, uh, Cardinal Designate Dolan called his mother up yesterday to give her a heads up on the news. Yeah. And so he said this morning that her response was, it's about time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and every time she showed up in New York, she would wear a red hat almost as a signal to the Pope yeah, saying, yeah, get yeah, this yeah, over yeah. with already. Yeah. But um, you know, I, there's always been a, a suspicion about making uh, an American Pope because of the superpower status of the yeah. United States. Mm-hmm. And if there's one of, you know, while, you know, he's such a force of nature, if you will, yeah. the kind of countervening reality of this consistory is that the College of Cardinals is becoming even more dominated by Europeans and especially by Italians. Certainly. A lot and of, a lot of Korea people on this list, right? A lot of Korea people. And that's the thing. You know, people are saying, well, is this a snub? Because there are no uh, African yeah, prelates right. on this list. There's only one Latin American, and he's mm-hmm. actually a Vatican official. Mm-hmm. But the, the Holy Father only had 13 seats. Uh, to deal with this time. Mm-hmm. You know, the Pope, the statutory maximum of the College of Cardinals uh, for uh, the electoral part, those who are younger than 80 and can go into a conclave, is 120. Right. And so <laughs> and so the Italians tend to, you know, or the curial people in general, tend to leapfrog their way at the front of the list. Mm-hmm. That's why Archbishop O'Brien was named, not as Archbishop of Baltimore, but as head of the Knights right. of the Holy Sepulchre, right. for which he was named in August. Now, as of today, uh, are they properly known as a cardinal, or are they a cardinal designate? What's the proper term for Archbishop Dolan today? Cardinal designate. And, okay. you know, it's it's intriguing, even though it's probably not going to be an issue, but, uh, you know, God forbid if, if something were to happen to the Holy Father today, um, these cardinals designate would not be able to go into a conclave oh, okay. uh, until they're formally elevated on February 18th at the Vatican. And they can't wear the red robes or anything like that. The, the ceremonies for elevating a cardinal used to be a lot more elaborate, but mm-hmm. now just they used to go on for like seven or eight days. But uh-huh. now it's just a two-day thing. On the first day, they receive the red beretta, the symbol of the office. And on the second day, they receive a ring, mm-hmm. which uh, it's a modern ring. They, they, cardinals used to be given a sapphire stone. Right. But now it's a modern uh, depiction of the crucifixion, and that uh, symbolizes the bond not just to the church in general, but especially to the apostolic see, to the pope, and and really helping the pope in in the governance of the worldwide church. And as you say, for a couple of uh, months at least, New York would have two votes if there was a consistory for the, a conclave for the pope, right? Well, hey, New York's got two (laughs) baseball teams. Why not have two (laughs) voting cardinals, you know? Why why not? Listen, we want (laughs) to talk to you when you're in Rome during the consistory, okay? All right, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks so much for being with us today, Rocco. Anytime, my friend. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Today, Brooklyn Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio issued a statement of congratulations to Cardinals-designate Dolan and O'Brien. Of the two men, Bishop DiMarzio said, it is a privilege not only for these exceptional leaders in the church, but also for us in the city of New York, 
which in the past has made a great contribution to the church in the United States and continues to do so today. We've posted Bishop DiMarzio's full statement on our website. Just go to currentsny.net. And we'll also hear more about that from Bishop DiMarzio later in the show. There is more Currents ahead. Another New York priest receives a distinct honor today. We'll have that story and the rest of the day's headlines next. Welcome back to Currents. I'm Maria Elena Giassi. Coming up later in the show, taking to the streets of New York for the annual Three Kings Parade. But first, let's have a look at the day's headlines. Recapping our top story, Pope Benedict announced today that New York Archbishop Timothy Dolan will be one of 22 men elevated to cardinal at a ceremony next month at the Vatican. He will become the eighth Archbishop of New York to join the College of Cardinals. Also named today was Archbishop Edwin O'Brien, a former auxiliary bishop for the New York Archdiocese and currently the head of the Knights of the Holy Sepulcher. And it was a distinct honor for another New York priest today at the Vatican. Pope Benedict ordained Monsignor Charles Brown, an archbishop. Brown was ordained a priest for the Archdiocese of New York in 1989, served at a parish in the Bronx, and has worked at the Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith since 1994. He was given the title of archbishop with his appointment as the Pope's Apostolic Nuncio to Ireland. From Nigeria, more violence against Christians. Six people were killed after gunmen stormed a church in the northern part of that country. The attack comes after the Islamist group Boko Haram issued an ultimatum earlier this week for all Christians to leave the region. The group was also responsible for Christmas bombings at two churches that killed 37 people. And back in this country, Republican presidential candidate Rick Santorum picked up a big endorsement from a Catholic group. The advocacy organization CatholicVote.org announced it is endorsing Santorum for the White House. In a statement, Catholic Vote President Brian Burke called Santorum a working man's Republican who represents the best hope to rally the nation behind a unified moral and economic vision. Santorum is one of two Catholics vying for the GOP presidential nod. In other news, a year later and not much has changed. According to the New York City Department of Health, 40% of pregnancies in the city ended in abortion in 2010, a drop of just 1% from a year earlier and almost twice the national average. The data also shared, showed that 60% of pregnancies in the city's African-American community ended in abortion in 2010. From Florida, police have arrested a man and charged him in the New Year's, New Year's Day fire at an abortion clinic in Pensacola. A 41-year-old homeless man could face up to 20 years in prison if convicted. According to the police, the man admitted to starting the fire due to his strong belief in abortion, excuse me, disbelief in abortion. The clinic had, the scene, had been the scene of other violent incidents. It was bombed on Christmas Day in 1984, and a doctor and volunteer were shot and killed there in 1994. Closer to home, the Archdiocese of Philadelphia has announced it will close or combine 48 schools. The head of the teachers' union there says she was told the news during a meeting with the Archdiocesan officials this morning. The Archdiocese will close four high schools and close or combine 44 elementary schools. The move comes because of rising costs and low enrollment. And Catholic Relief Services has announced its first female CEO. Carolyn Wu has been named the seventh president and CEO of Catholic Relief Services. Wu is the former dean of the University of Notre Dame's Mendoza College of Business. She takes over for Ken Hackett, who retired after serving as Catholic Relief Services CEO for 18 years. Stay tuned, there's more currents coming up. Just ahead, we go into the deep with Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio to talk about immigration and presidential politics. We help a tremendous amount of immigrants each year and uh, we're there to help them pastorally but also uh, with any of the services they need. Welcome back. The Obama administration has announced a proposal that would make it easier for undocumented immigrants in the U.S. to get their green cards. 
Under current law, immigrants in the country illegally who are married to or are children of U.S. residents are allowed to become U.S. citizens but must leave the country while they wait for a visa. A loophole prohibits them from returning to the U.S. anywhere from three to ten years. Under the proposal, a person could ask for the waiver before they leave the U.S. The news comes just ahead of the U.S. Bishop's National Migration Week, which takes place this year, January 8th through the 14th. And immigration will no doubt be a topic on the presidential campaign trail. Our news director, Ed Wilkinson, had a chance to talk about that with Brooklyn Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio, as well as the news of New York Archbishop Timothy Dolan's impending elevation to Cardinal. Those items are on the agenda in this week's Into the Deep. Bishop, thanks for being with us today. Always good to be with you. Uh, a great day today for New York because uh, the Archbishop has yes, been elevated is. and he's a Cardinal. Uh, That's great. Yeah, and he and Archbishop O'Brien, who is uh, another New Yorker. Right. Uh, what does that mean for New York City? Well, I think it's, a, it's an honor, and uh, New York City is uh, the greatest city in the world, let's put it that way. Let's be clear, and to have a cardinal to represent the church there is uh, probably just what should happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a couple of months anyway, we're going to have uh, two cardinals who are eligible to vote, right? That's right. It's yeah. a curious thing. I wonder how that <coughs> be resolved, but uh, let's hope that there's not a need for any voting. Okay. We want to talk today a little bit about another issue that's been in the news a lot, and that's uh, immigration. Uh, and a couple of weeks ago, the Hispanic bishops uh, in the United States issued a pastoral statement to immigrants uh, saying that they were with them and they were thinking about them. And uh, uh, Bishop Cisneros was one of the signers of that document. Uh, well, what does that mean to immigrants to hear their bishops speak on their behalf? Well, I had some reaction, and it was a positive one, obviously, because they felt the bishops were with them, understood the pain, the difficulty, and it was a pastoral statement, looking at the pastoral situation of, of people, especially those that are undocumented, and they were trying to give them some, some support, some hope, some encouragement that perhaps this situation could be resolved in, in some time in the future. Mm -hmm. I know this is one of your uh, uh, favorite topics because I mean, mm -hmm. you, you pay a lot of, t uh, of attention to immigration issues. Uh, and some politicians will say, well, you know, we're giving people who are here illegally a shortcut to uh, becoming citizens. How do we respond to something like that? Well, it's complicated. And if you want to just put it that way, that might be true. But at the same time, we looked the other way when they got here. We did not enforce our border. Worse yet, we did not enforce any restrictions in the workplace because the draw is that people come here to work. Mm -hmm. They're not coming here to go on welfare. It's almost very, very difficult, almost not impossible to receive the benefits uh, that if someone is not uh, a d undocumented status. Mm -hmm. So the real issue is that we've got to deal on both sides of what we would say is illegality. First of all, breaking the law, coming here, and also uh, people who hire people who they shouldn't hire. So we need to enforce the workplace, I believe, it's not the, the border that's the issue, not the, the fence that some people want to build, but rather <coughs> it's a secure work document that will ensure that only those who are allowed to work will work, and that will take away the, the incentive for people to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the issues I know that bishops are concerned about is keeping families intact, because right. sometimes, uh, you know, if we would deport some people who are illegally, uh, you would be sending mothers home or fathers home. and uh, I mean, that, that's always a yeah. concern, family life, right? Yeah, the issue is that m most of the undocumented live in what they call mixed family units because some are documented, some are U.S.-born citizens, some would be <coughs> on the way to getting some, their status re uh, resolved. So it's not so clear-cut that you're going to have very mixed status in these families. Mm -hmm. And that's not s something that you want to act on because you've been separating families right. and that, that's that's key to our society keeping families intact we gain little by you know separating families yeah this uh, this is a presidential election year and uh, immigration is such a hot uh, button uh, you know here in the United States that uh, you would tend to think that maybe the Congress is not even going to address th the issue this year well it's pretty clear that they're not willing to touch it I mean, mm -hmm. they are not touching a lot of things they should but it's uh, such a, a complex political issue that it's a third rail, uh, nobody wants to touch it. It's mm -hmm. instant death. 
So it's going to be a, a long time before we see, uh, I think, some reasonable legislation come before it. And it would be obviously until after the next election and probably a bit into the term. Yeah, and I guess, uh, you know, we, we call ourselves the Diocese of Immigrants here. So uh, right. this is something that really touches near and dear to our heart. It does, because many people here are in a difficult status. We have a lot of other technical things that should be dealt with in the immigration law. We have people who really can regularize their status, but because of technicalities of the law, have to leave the country. And then once they leave, another part of the law hits, uh, kicks in and they can't come back. So it's like a, yeah. you know, a, a catch-22 situation. Yeah. Those are the things that need to be checked in, in the law and no, changed. We should say that the diocese is always uh, stands ready to help immigrants. We have our own migration office That's here. That's right. We, we do. We help a tremendous amount of immigrants each year. And uh, we're there to help them pastorally, but also uh, with any of the services they need. Sure. Well, thanks, Bishop. Uh, thanks for taking the time out You're and welcome. being with us today. Stay tuned. There's more currents ahead. When we return, as the 12 days of Christmas comes to an end, an annual celebration here in New York will take you to it. I'm just excited to be here with the children who dress up as, as angels and kings and all kind of biblical figures. We are, wait till you see us march. It's a lot of fun. Finally tonight, Chances are you're familiar with the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas. And if you believe the words of that seasonal classic, your true love should have given you 12 drummers drumming today, along with a bunch of other things, including a partridge in a pear tree. That's right, today is the twelfth day of Christmas. And it is on this day that in many parts of the world, the Feast of the Epiphany is celebrated, marking the arrival of the three kings to pay homage to the infant Jesus. Here in the U.S., the church will mark that on Sunday. But today, as it is done every January 6th for the past 35 years, the Museo de del Barrio hosted the Three Kings Parade. Feliz Dia de los Reyes, Feliz Año Nuevo, uh, y uh, que um, Dio los bendiga. Every year, for the last 35 years, the Museo del Barrio in East Harlem has been celebrating the Three Kings Day with a parade throughout the streets of East Harlem. So what you're going to see is more than 3,000 school kids, community-based organizations, people in the community, elected officials. We're all going to be celebrating the, the tradition of the Three Kings by um, joining the parade. Three Kings Day is one of the biggest holidays in the community. It's important in many parts of the world. It certainly is important here in New York City and in East Harlem. Now, it's often one of the coldest parades of the year, but nonetheless, the warmth of the people, the community, the spirit, uh, it's certainly worth being here, and I enjoy it every year. I've done the parade as a padrino, but uh, not as a king. This is my first time as a king, and it's an honor and a privilege to be here to do this. You see, I was born here in this community. This is my community. And so to be asked and to be honored that way, to be a king at this parade, tops. This is the day that the three kings visited baby Jesus in the manger <laughs> and hardly slept last night. I'm like a little kid about this, and, and I, I heard from other people that they didn't sleep either because we're just excited and we're going to have a great time and a lot of fun. And we have camels. It's very, very important, not only for community in New York, no, it's for all communities. It's part of our heritage, it's part of what we believe is a time of giving. This is like a flashback to when I was a little kid. I started coming to the Museo del Barrio when I was a little girl, so it, it just, um, it's an honor. <laughs> In the tradition, you see how we you know it's about sharing food, sharing the music, sharing the happiness. We think it's a value that we um, want to share with everybody in, in the city, in New York. That's why we celebrate the parade.
That is all for this edition of Currents. Be sure to visit us online at CurrentsNY.net. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. And if you have a question, comment, or story idea, email us. The address is drop us a line at CurrentsNY.net. For all of us here at Currents, I'm Marie Elena Giassi. Thank you for watching. Have a great night. Thank you.